Hi, everybody. Welcome to another installment of Inside the Lumino Studio. Today's guest, Christian Norgard, he likely learned how to operate a camera before he could even read or write. The very early days of his career were at a Danish newspaper in Copenhagen. Although it wasn't long before he traveled the world selling his images to publications around the globe. A natural born leader and innovator, Christian decided to start his own media company, becoming in a sense, his own client. Most of us can't pull that off, but he certainly did. Not one to remain idle for long, Christian sold his interest in the company and he started Better Moments. The rest, as we say, is history. And so with that, let's start the show. Here is Bill Carlson with Inside the Lumino Studio. Good morning, everyone uh, near and far. We have so many fans from several different countries and even right here in Minneapolis. So welcome indeed to this third edition of Inside the Lumino Studio. And Kristen, it is such a pleasure to see you again. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank we you so have, very much. <laughs> we have so much to talk about. I mean, yeah. it, it's uh, amazing. I, in fact, I, I uh, remember the late great author, Tom Wolfe, uh, mm -hmm. once had an astronaut friend of his call him and say, you know, I'm going to write a book about my, sp my uh, space experiences, but I don't know where to start. And uh, Tom <laughs> said wisely, he said, start at the beginning. So tell us a little bit about your beginnings. I understand they started very early in your life. Yeah, I, I've, since I can remember, I've always had this passion for for uh, for photography to to uh, to capture those things that I saw in front of me, and um, and as soon I, I I could get a camera, I start to take pictures actually, and for quite many years those pictures was literally no nothing. It was more registrations. But at, at what point it started to grow for me that I could see that if you got a little bit more um, of your own personality into your work, then all of a sudden you could create some create something that was more different and with more soul and so on. And later on in life, I was uh, so lucky that I could get uh, education as a photographer. In Denmark, we actually have a five years uh, education program for photographers. Mm -hmm. And um, it is really, really difficult, actually, not because you need a special talent, but because there's only at that point, at that time, there was 37 people that year who could go into the school. So think about wow. we were maybe 1,000, 2,000 who want to become a photographer, but it was just, you know, you really have to, to get yourself inside uh, the system, so to speak. And for years, I was working for a newspaper in Copenhagen and uh, as uh, Denise said, the rest is kind of you know, star <laughs> history, you know. <laughs> yes, yeah. it is. I'd like to get right into some images so we can yeah. talk a little bit about it. This is stunning. And maybe you Thank can you tell so. us a little bit about uh, this photograph Absolutely. and this location. Wow, yeah. I, I agree. It, it makes me uh, happy to see because it, it's a while ago that we all was able to go traveling and especially to a place like this yeah. because where we are uh, right now is at the Svalbard, which is a part of Norway. Uh, Svalbard is, is, is a, it's a bunch of small islands between Russia and Greenland. And to travel in that area, you go with, with, with small boats uh, as, as I did when I did this, this shot. And when you go on a hillside, you would be able to shoot over the landscape like here. You have the glacier in the foreground and the mountains uh, in the background. But what we cannot see is is behind me, there's a guy with a gun because there's <laughs> literally, uh, you have to have this person along with you because there's polar bears all over the place. This is in the wild. And oh. even we all like polar bears, you know, we think that it's so nice, The you know, this, it's such a cozy animal, so to speak, but it's literally a killer machine. So you have this guy with you who would look at all time if there would be a polar bear showing up. But uh, but back to the picture, uh, to 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 create this this shot here, we we were a bunch of people. Not a bunch. It was eight nine people who were uh, traveling together, and we did a hike for some few hours to get up on on the top. So we had this 
view over the scenery. Um, and um, and it's kind of classic pictures. Uh, you have the foreground, the mid middle ground, and then the backdrop, which is the mountain out there. Yeah. Uh, it's absolutely stunning. I, I photographed polar bears in uh, yeah. Can Canada at uh, mm -hmm. on, Hudson, on Hudson's Bay at Churchill. Oh, yeah? They're, they're, they're little buggies. You, you'd go out to, <laughs> to search for polar bears. We're so high. And I asked the guy, why are those... You know, why are these things way, way up in the air? And so yeah. they, they come and reach up. And if they were any lower, they'd tip them over. <laughs> and sure enough, when we got out there, they would stand on their hind legs. <laughs> and, they were, uh, and they're very they'd, tall. They'd stick their nose right against the window. Yeah. So it was, uh, but that's, the scenery was not like that. It was very, very yeah. different. This is a fabulous yeah. shot, speaking of polar bears. Oh, thank you so very much. Uh, yeah, it's it's um, since I'm not a wildlife photographer as you are, you know, I, I, I'm 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 just going with the flow, so to speak. And uh, mm -hmm. and uh, in this situation here, I had only my 20, 24 millimeters on on mm -hmm. my on my system, and I kind of liked actually to 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 take pictures with this small wide angle thing because you could work a little bit to frame um, you know mm -hmm. the animals uh, along this trip a lot of my colleagues they will have long lens cameras which was really nice and cool as well and i wish i had a 300 millimeter or even a longer one but i didn't have so all my photography uh, on, on svalbard and wildlife in general on this trip was based on this this 24 millimeter and um, and in this case here I was waiting until the polar bear would look at us and then try to use the eyes in the corners to like lead us into uh, the polar bear and uh, a great moment for me for sure and for all of us who can enjoy this beautiful animal. Oh, it, it's an amazing shot. I, I, I love it. Thank, uh, thank it you so much. Looks, the, the sea ice looks like broken glass, you know, in yeah. the foreground. It looks like... A, Sheets of pane glass that are that are are just floating. Um, I was yeah. going to ask you. It, it leads me to the question about your kit of, mm -hmm. of what you normally take with you on a shoot. And I know to uh, we talked to Ed Kashi a while back, and mm -hmm. his kit is very sparse. He yeah. said, you know, very few lenses. Very. He said over mm -hmm. the years he's got it's shrunk. <laughs> because he understands what he needs and, and yeah what about yours what do you normally take with you yeah i'm, I'm actually also very easy going it's uh, it, if i go traveling and i go traveling for for, for the company for, for street photography actually which i'm doing a lot actually i more or less always only have a zoom lens 24 17 and i would have that on my camera for actually all my shooting but i do also always bring uh, some some high-end uh, prime uh, prime lenses from from lights like an 80 and a 50 uh, millimeter which i can use if i have time to do a a portrait or mm -hmm. i can do some landscape or whatever but but when i'm just right there going from, from one place uh, to another then it would always be with my my um, my zoom lens uh, along with me because it's yeah it's it's cover more or less all my needs well yeah. i uh if you'll uh, forgive yeah, me you. i gotta put my other earpiece in here i'm not quite used to these <laughs> yet i kind of squirted it out of there but yeah. i remember back in the day i i couldn't wait uh, i was shooting a lot with nikons and and i couldn't wait to get my hands on a 35 to 70. Mm. And then, of course, when I started, I actually did a lot of film work with the Canon 5D. And that yeah. 70, that the mm. uh, 24 to 70 is just miraculous. Yeah. And it just is so handy. And I, in the very beginning, I preferred primes because they weren't really making a good zoom lens back in the day. Mm -hmm. And no. now they're fantastic. Yeah, I have to say so that the quality is 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 is, is really good, and, um, and you know, and what what is quality when you do photography? Is it for me? Quality is actually 
that I can bring something home. Because you can have all the equipment you, you can have in the whole world. But if you don't get the pictures that you would like to create, then um, the equipment will, will not bring you anywhere, actually. So for me, quality is is the end result and not as much if, if, if it's a little bit blurry in the corners due to the lens quality. Um, it, it doesn't matter for me when, no, actually not, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, in fact, let's go to that next picture that we yeah. saw, and then we got sidetracked, of course. Bill started talking about something else, but I love that. Yeah. And thanks awesome. for sending that in the file. <laughs> but it just, it's, it's, so, it's so cool, and it brings me to the, the, it, the introduction, or, or, or I'd really like to talk, talk a little bit about better moments because yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think our viewers would be very interested in it, in the opportunity that it affords. Now, many still photographers are solo mm -hmm. performers, right? They're, they're just solo. But you're yeah. not. You share your craft oh. and your art. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. With, with uh, your travelers, fellow travelers. Absolutely. I think it's very important that, uh, that we all can share our passion for what we're doing. And regardless if I was a doctor or a taxi driver in on Manhattan or whatever, you know, that if we have passion, why, why don't we just share it with each other? It's not such a big deal. And in, in my case and our case in general, it's around photography. And um, I've, 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 I have a wonderful time when I spend a day together with people like, you know, that, that I get along with. And together we, we can create uh, photography, we can discuss photography, we can cry we can laugh we can <laughs> go through the day together that that's i just think that's that's really fun and and this 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 is me sitting there in in uh, in Kathmandu and uh, it is actually a typical situation when i go traveling and do my photography as you can see it's actually my 2470 uh, lens i'm working with and um for me, it, it's important not to, to do portraits too very difficult. So this is, uh, I don't, yeah, I think actually just, I was walking down the street and this guy, he was sitting inside having a cup of tea or so, and then uh, went inside and using the, whatever light that was there coming from, from a door or window. So a wonderful experience for, for both of us. Oh, that's, that's what it's all about, you know, uh... Bill Allard said at one point, he, you know, he said mm -hmm. he doesn't take he doesn't take pictures. He's gifted pictures. Yeah, yeah. And I, I think that's a great way to put it. That we all, we if we're patient enough and, and and work hard enough at it, we are gifted. And if we connect yeah. with our 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 subjects, which is key. Yeah, and. and um... It's, I mean, if, if this is also around the workflow, because of course you can have a great passion for, for your photography and you can have uh, your knowledge as well that you know that in the morning you want to do this kind of photography, midday when it's very bright, you would like to do this kind of photography. So experience will bring you uh, a long way, so to speak, but at the same time, it's also important to give yourself the freedom to do whatever that will happen in front of you when you're walking with your camera or whatever. And and if you're on assignment, as I've been God knows how many times, you also actually have to be organized in how you're planning uh, planning your stuff. I'm not. For, I heard this also this the other day, this, this, this guy from National Geographic telling you about that sometimes they have six months to do a, <laughs> to do a job. Though I'm not that generation, you know, we had three days, you know, yeah. it would be go, to, yeah. <laughs> go to Berlin on a Friday and be back on Monday and we need <laughs> this and that, you know, that's, that's my life, that's my, yeah, yes. my background. Yes. But, but so, in, in the, so I'm very used to divide the day up in, in, in how I can approach my stuff. But at the same time, I'm always, if I'm on assignment, thinking about I need a spread for the story 
and then I need this and that, and that's that's actually how I will work and define, you know, work the day together. And this picture of me from before, if I had been on an assignment, my idea would be that could be the cover or that could be something strong like that. That would never be a spread or whatever. It, it's, it, it would be something that I know would be useful for the editor later on to use. Well, I think yeah. that's so, so true because my, my background is so much motion. We mm -hmm. really, and we shoot for the editor, right? Yeah. To, make, yeah. to, to, to not make the editor's life miserable. You, you give them a variety of shots to work with. And plus, we try, not in documentaries, of course, but in, in features. Mm -hmm. And we, we work with a storyboard where we pre-visualize. And in a way, you're using a mental storyboard to say, OK, I'm going to, this is my list for today. This is mm -hmm. how I'm going to approach things. And, and yeah. being organized like that is very important. And it is, yeah. Of, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no, it's, it's because it, it's, a, it's an important point because I think that a lot of visual people like passionate photographers, regardless if you're a professional or what you are, is also very creative. You know, we really like to think out of the box and get all kinds of ideas. Uh, like once uh, I went to, to Italy, to Roma, because I want to have a bottle of red wine uh, flowing around in some water. And I have so many stupid ideas. <laughs> and and it was a lot of I mean I was very ambitious, but the truth is that 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 is it, it never happened the way I thought it would be. So what I'm trying to say is that we we can be extremely cre creative, but at the same time we need to be very conservative, and think in a structure to put all our good ideas into structure. And if you're able to do that, then you you can really do a lot of things. I I met a lot of very talented photographers, artists who was so creative that he in the very end forgot that, that you know, to do the job, so to speak. Everything ended up, <laughs> yeah. That's a famous story of Alfred Eisenstadt when he was yeah. a young photographer. I think it was 1936-ish mm -hmm. in that area. And he, it was one of his first major assignments and he was sent off to, to I think, uh, cover the wedding of the Prince of Monaco or the, Mm -hmm. He went to Monaco to cover the wedding, and yeah. uh, he shot all of the horses and the soldiers and the priests and uh, forgot to get a shot of the bride and groom. Mm. <laughs> so yeah. they had to buy it from another paper, you know. Yeah, <laughs> but and that's that's the. the I, I I heard a lecture actually with a a wedding photographer, and. Uh, I've never been into wedding photography at all, but uh, but I, I, I spent this one hour listening to this guy, and he had some very cool points about wedding photography, to be a wedding photographer. And he said the most important people, uh, picture is where they're kissing each other. Yeah. He said, if you don't have that, you don't have that job next time. And trust me, I've been invited to God knows how many weddings to take pictures for my friends and family. I, I never had that picture. Never. I didn't, it was not even in my mind. Yes, yes. Oh, <laughs> but it's true. I'm married too. I, 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 I was thinking, yeah, do I have that picture? No, not really. But would I love it? Yes, of course. <laughs> well, in, in, in my when I got married uh, 20, oh, not, well, we've been together 20 years, but yeah. now it's been a fairly long time. Our thirteen-year-old was the <laughs> was the photographer. <laughs> and, you know, she did a great job. I got yeah, say, she did a better job mm -hmm. than I would have done. Because <laughs> mother-in-laws scare me to death, so I'm not going really to be good at weddings. <laughs> <clears throat> but that's, that's oh, oh, look yeah. at that. Oof, I'm I'm sorry. You can continue. Oh yeah, but no, I, that, I was but just this... stunned by this. I mean, with the oh, three, thank you so much. Uh, layers, you can see the, the edges, and then this beautiful the waterfall spraying from the, it's just spectacular. Yeah. And, and I'm happy that I'm still alive, actually. Uh, <laughs> oh, God. Bring up, I brought because, up a sore subject today. <laughs> you know, because I haven't seen that picture for a long time. So what, what the story behind this picture is that it's, it's the fairy island. And um, 
it was a it was really a stormy weather. It it I can, you can see the waves uh, kind mm -hmm. of spray a bit, but I think it was maybe eight ten meters high. Uh, it was <sighs> extremely high. I'm standing pretty high at this point, and I had an assistant uh, on this. Normally, I actually never have as I don't bring assistants when to, when I'm traveling, but in this case, I had one, and he's standing behind me with a big thing just to keep the wind away because I'm standing with my tripod and it was extremely windy. And at one point he said, we need to get, get away from here because he got scared because the water started to come up, you know. Oh, so long story oh. short, this is one shot from that day. And uh, yeah, I think it's kind of, when you do uh, kind of this, you know, landscape, whatever, try to add in more than one story in, 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 in your shot. And in this case, I like this peaceful though nothing happens in the front of you and then when you look out you have a waterfall coming down you have this <laughs> water it's kind of dramatic and it, it was uh, you know and yeah it's uh, it, it yeah. reminds me of the um, the upside down falls in the uh, valley leading up to the poly on oahu yeah. uh, mm -hmm. i have to live on oahu for a number of years and Every, almost every day you could kind of gauge the weather by how yeah. upside down the falls was. It would jump, go over the side, drop for about 100 feet, and then dissipate and just be yeah. blown into the valley. It's beautiful. Yeah. And, and, and it is, it's, 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 uh, it's nice to talk about because uh, that's some of those experiences you, you, you get when you go, you know, you get to places around the world, in this case, waterfalls. And in the beginning, when I was shooting waterfalls, um, I, beside of all kinds of ideas I had around it, I got surprised the day I realized that the water not always would come down, but the wind could be so heavy <laughs> that it would actually go up. So, yes. yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it's, you, you, it's... you're right. Waterfall not it it's, can be uh, yeah, it can be many things. Oh, it's fantastic here. Here in Minneapolis, we have of course there hard frozen winter and mm -hmm. one of my favorite little excursions is to go photograph behind the falls where you have oh, yeah, yeah. Ca cascading ice mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. never yeah. ceases to be different you know and mm -hmm. a yeah. little bit and then freeze but uh, yeah, you know, they... the weather is is uh, amazing it, it, yeah. you, when you when we as photographers get a chance to witness almost all of it <laughs> at yeah. one time one time or another. What's her next photograph? Oh, that's wow. that, that's, that's you. Yeah, that's that me. Yeah, that's me. Yes, that's from the base camp of Mount Everest. Um, oh, very good, very good. Yeah, we just and, got this image. Oh, oh, yeah. Is that right? Um, okay. Yeah, it's it's nice to see all those pictures. You know, <laughs> it remind me about. Remember it, yeah, but but uh, in this case here, we are in the base camp. Of, behind me is Everest, and um, and you can uh, get to this point um, as a photographer and, and as a tourist as well. Actually, it's it's not it's a question about how to get there. From this point where I'm standing, you can walk. It takes you maybe a, a day or so to another base camp. And from there on, it's actually where all the climbers will have their, have their base camp when they start climbing Everest. And um, w when I was younger, I had this ambition actually to, to climb Mount Everest. And um, I had a lot of friends, not a lot, but some friends who had the same uh, stupid idea. <laughs> and uh, because it is a stupid idea, it, 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 it has turned quite... out to be a very stupid idea. <laughs> yeah, it years. is actually. But anyway, but a long story short, uh, I, I went climbing in Austria and other places in, in Europe, but I never made it to Everest, thanks God. And uh, I, I met my wife, and we got kids. And uh, and and instead of climbing Everest, I actually made a, a book about it. And uh, doing my research, I had the great pleasure to, to travel to New Zealand and meet Edmund Hillary, who was the oh. first person on, on the yeah. summit of Everest. Yeah. 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 yeah, fantastic person. Um, we, yeah, we spent the whole day together talking about how he climbed Everest with Tenzing and uh, uh -huh. the whole organization. And it was, it was a, 
an amazing day for me to to be together with him. Well, and he said something. He said something I will share also with you because that that's have been a philosophy for me ever since. He said that to climb Everest and to get to the summit, that should not be your goal. Your goal is to to reach the summit and come down again alive. And that picture you can Very actually wise. use in, in life in general. You know, we are all aiming to get to a point, but it's not the point that should be the most important part. It's actually to be able to return as well to in whatever return. we're doing in life. Yeah. yeah. So that so that that was Everest and um, me standing there, which was a great great, great philosophy. Yeah. Yeah. We, so. Very much. It's easy to lose track of that. And mm -hmm. in yeah, yeah. in, in, in photography too, uh, yeah. you can get lost in the picture and, and mm -hmm. forget about what's going on around you. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And yeah. you always have to. I had an old friend who was a 747 captain, and his his point about little cockpit lights mm -hmm. said, always always remember you're flying the plane. <laughs> yeah. Don't yeah. don't worry about the light. Fly the plane. Yeah. <laughs> and and I, only speaking, as I have been feel guilty sometimes if I if if I did street photography because I'm I'm so uh, concentrated when I'm when I'm doing photography that I, I I'm not a rude person at all. I really pay as much respect to whoever I'm meeting in life in, in all in all senses, but I can be so concentrated that. That I forget everything around me, and then I will. I can do photography. I, I do all those things I would like to do. I have the person I'm taking the picture, and I would be out of the door. And then I'm thinking, I, I didn't even say, you know, thank you for spending time with me. Um, you know, thank you for for make this very moment even more special for me because now I had the, the chance to to capture you in my photography, and that's a little bit the same story. You know, we we should. Be a little, sometime, be a little bit more, pay more attention to that we should all get down from the river <laughs> at life. I love that. I'm, I'm jealous because I would have loved to be a fly on the wall with you talking to Edmund Hillary. Oh, that would have been a, a, I would have been rolling the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we would have a great time. He was, I tell you, the most down to earth person. I, I, he was so nice, honest. He would have served both of us coffee, and uh, he would have talked about small things, wow. big things. Yeah. That was that was nothing. It was really really nice. I've met other people that was way more difficult. Well, I think yeah. that for me, and as as I'm understanding from you, photography mm -hmm. has always been my ticket to ride. I mean, yeah. I would have never experienced mm -hmm. what I experienced in my life mm -hmm. professionally mm -hmm. or artistically without yeah. photography it oh. was just my my key and i followed mm. the string very much like yeah. you from a, yeah. a young age and i think that's important for people to realize that it can be a great profession <laughs> it can be, you know it can open up yeah. doors you never imagined so. meet so many uh, fantastic people uh, i've never been into celebrities but uh, i've met bunch of, of very famous people just because it happens to that I should take their picture. And yeah. if, if I was not a photographer, if I could not say, okay, I'm a photographer and I would like to do this and that, I would never have met them. So maybe one day, you know, when we all is looking back, maybe I would pay more attention to, not attention, but maybe I'll be more <laughs> humble be more happy about things like that but yeah. when we're coming down the mountain alive right exactly That's when yeah, we'll yeah. Do it. <laughs> let's move to the next image and discuss yeah. that this is something i i thought was great yeah i mean it's just an incredible shot and i don't know if yeah. that's you or not but it is no just, you, you probably took the shot i took the but, shot and I did it because I thought this guy, he was crazy because. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are talking life and death, aren't we? Yeah, so very appropriate image. Yeah, 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 absolutely. No, it's, of course, he's not crazy. He's he's just, as we all are, we want to have this 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 shot. And um, and it's not that dangerous. But this, this place is uh, on Iceland. 
and it's uh, it's an area where all the ice it's the ice actually comes from the glacier and then it would go from the glacier out with a river and then it would end on the shoreline as as they do here mm -hmm. and it's it's a very popular place to take uh, pictures of this this ice uh, laying on, on the beach side. And um, in this case, this is probably four, ah, not four, two or three o'clock in the morning because oh. it, it, the sun doesn't go down overnight and uh, the best light is, is around that time of, of the day. And um, yeah, <laughs> it was it's standing there. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like, like you say, uh, this should be a cover. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, if, if, magazine. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that that's one hundred percent sure. Yeah, if that had, if that had been for for yeah, photo magazine, and you would have used it because it's it's a funny picture, and you can put the, your text on the side, and it's yeah. it's it's an eye catcher right away. It is. It is. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. What, what's but, their next image that we have? Oh, that one. That, that is so yeah. amazing, and maybe you can tell us a little bit about not only mm -hmm. the, the situation but yeah. the great choice of light you made with the light Thank coming you. through the window and the, the various veins in the window mm -hmm. absolutely um thank you for, for bringing up this portrait because this it's 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 makes me happy as well to share it with with all of us because um, it's it's an i mean I'm not supposed to say so, but I'm happy about this portrait because many things got together uh, that very moment. Um, so the story is like this, that I met this this guy uh, in, in Nepal. Uh, he was uh, walking outside and there was this house and there was the windows. And I I could see the light went through the windows to the wall and made this, this, uh, this spread or whatever, these yeah. shadows. So I saw that and I was thinking, wow, wouldn't that be a wonderful uh, place to do a portrait? So I gently asked him if, if I mean, he, he doesn't speak English. I don't speak his language, but body language is, is the same. It's a global language. It's, if I do like this and I say, would you like that? And then before you know about it, we went in there. So, so he's sitting uh, next to the window. So all the light he has is in his face. Is from this window, and it's the same window who made this reflection on the wall. And uh, I placed him in a way that that the shadow should repeat his hair somehow. How this oh, the hair yeah. goes around, and then I had this idea that the shadow would would, would bring it a bit up. And um, and for me, it was important to have. Um, those elements in my frame, which on his arm, you can see his his uh, jewelries or whatever it is. Uh, his his mustache was also, I want to keep that in the frame as well. So, and then at the same time, I like this, this center of his eyes looking at all of us. And it all together, it, I, I think it's, 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 it's a, uh, it's a nice portrait that we can all learn from because it, there's kind of a balance as well. And um, if I can share share that uh, workflow with anyone, I think it would be, you know, it's 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 not a difficult picture to take, but it's it's nice, yeah. That's a, mm -hmm. uh, but you you talk about workflow, and that that's so true. And taking advantage of your environment, mm -hmm. and saying, okay, you may see him outside; he's outside working. But what can yeah. I build? What can I build with the elements that I'm given? But with, what is at my disposal here? And by taking him inside, using something like this, you create a much more compelling uh, yeah. photograph. And, and yeah, because it. Mm, but also, also because that if 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 um, if I, how can I put it? It it I could also have 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 if I have, I don't remember actually that day because it's it's yeah. It's, it's a few years ago, but anyhow, it could also have been nice just to to spend maybe a whole day together with him, and that's something I can suggest everyone to do. I mean, if you meet a person, and he's and, and you get along together, I mean, I, I think it could be a lot of fun to to see his home, 
you know, how would he cook his food? How yeah. I, I'm I'm sure that that his house is very very, it's just as photogenic as he is. I think he's he has a very simple lifestyle with with a car. He probably have one blanket, one fireplace, one cup, one plate. I have this idea, and it could be a, that could be fun as well to follow a person like that. And I would suggest everyone who's watching us right now to sometime have that. Uh, in your mind that why not uh, spend a day with the people you're meeting? Why, why not? Indeed. Yeah. I think that that is such an important, and I appreciate you uh, bringing up um, learning, looking at images mm -hmm. and learning from them. That's one of our charters here at Lumino is to exactly yeah. just look at images and, and appreciate them for, for their intrinsic value and then the value they can bring students mm -hmm. people who are, are, are coming up what can we show them that, that we've paid dearly to learn <laughs> yeah 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 and and, yeah, and also i mean I, I was very happy when i was younger that somebody would that, that there would be people like us who want to share that, that their knowledge that and, and do it with any no kind of jealousy or, and all that stupid things because my god i've made bunch of photographers who has, like when I was when I was a student, I guarantee you, if, if when I was at working at this newspaper in Copenhagen, if, if there was anything going on outside, where there would be like 10 photographers, and if I would ask a colleague, uh, you know, where, where, where should we go? He will point in that direction, and at that <laughs> moment, I know I'll have to go this way. Oh. <laughs> you know, that's how it was, you know. No, that's, that's how it was, you know. So, so so it's uh, so true. It is yeah. so true, and I mean, we're like everybody else. We have our own jealousies. And, mm -hmm. uh, I wish I worked for this magazine or that magazine. Yeah, but, yeah, of course, yeah. But I, I had a, a a mentor. I had many mentors in my life. Yeah, Very, yeah. Oh God, I can I can't I sometimes can't even count them. But, mm -hmm. but he said he said to me when you when I was young, I was probably t early twenties. And he said to mm -hmm. me, uh, when you learn a trick, pass it on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that yeah. was his philosophy. And he was probably in his uh, 50s, 60s. We were working mm -hmm. together at a studio in Honolulu. But yeah. I, uh, that stuck with me. When you learn mm -hmm. a trick, pass it on. And yeah, some of the cool. most rewarding times I've ever had are getting together with students and mm -hmm. I remember mm -hmm. um, I used to teach production classes, film classes at the yeah. University of Minnesota with a, actually the, I, I worked with the professor, but yeah. I yeah. would I would shoot the whole day and then mm -hmm. I would say, oh God, I committed myself to this class. <laughs> I am tired. Of, but I would go there and I would be so invigorated by the students mm -hmm. at mm -hmm. the end of the class that yeah. I'd, I'd be so pumped up that I'd be just ready to go for another 15 rounds. You know? <laughs> but I'm, I'm glad you, you're not a solo performer and you share no. your, your Absolutely. with people. And that's that's evident in your work. And I think so. And, and, and uh, I, I still remember that, you know, just as you said, you had mentors. I had two mentors that I met uh, through my career, which was not actually the, the most... Uh, how can I? It was not the most important photographers at all. It was just working to make their living yeah. as a photographer. There was no nothing fancy about it. But one, he was a sports uh, sports uh, photographer, and we did a lot of boxing. When I was young, I thought boxing was so much fun because you, you had it was at, at the analog times. You had a thirty-five millimeter body on your left side. On your right side, you have an eighty-five millimeter. And in the 35 body, you had black and white film. In the <laughs> right. other one, you have colors. That's how it works. And so you had those two guns, and then you had to shoot. You know, you and you had to be so fast. There was no auto focus and all that. And 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 this mentor I had his name was Bit, and he was the most cool guy you can think about. He would smoke cigarettes, have coffee, <laughs> and have those two guns going around like this. And, and he just knew when everything happens. And I, I spent God knows how many hours together with Ben. And I learned so much about timing because he knew right away. You could He started to get this. I could tell before that would happen and knock out 
because Ben he knew now he's gonna go down because he was mm. sitting with both bodies like that and uh, a long story short so we meet people like that and he didn't give a nickel about sharing his notes he, he thought that was just why not Christian check this camera don't do that and uh, yeah yeah it, it, it means everything to to have some some mentors and and some are easier to live with than others <laughs> I've had some oh, yeah. rough characters in my time but I always learned something from them I always got something from and that's, yeah. that's what uh, I, I imagine is most rewarding about better moments for you mm -hmm. is to see people progress in, in their oh, photography. Yeah. And, and mm -hmm. I'm just going to ask you about that um, yeah. be, because in, in my documentary career, the producer and I used to every night after we'd shoot, mm -hmm. we'd go have dinner and we just mentally download, okay, what did we mm -hmm. get? What are we doing? Is that something you do on your trips where you, you have a, a dinner and kind of download ideas? Oh, yeah. what, ha what happened today? Absolutely. Um, what I do is uh, doing, when we are running our workshops, um, then since I would be together with the clients most of the time, uh, either in a small group or all together, depending the whole thing, then I would look at the I would look at the student. How is how is that student working actually? Because quite many who who start uh, photography in, in street photography will take will, will actually shoot people when they're walking out of the frame. That's something you actually see quite many do, and um, so that that could be the first step. If I was if you and I was running something together, it was your first time with a camera and. A, and I saw you were doing that. I was saying, "Hey, come on, Bill. I think we should. Why don't Why don't we walk with that person and see what happens? Maybe they go inside for coffee and all that." So that's like during the day. I like to improve the skills uh, that you need to to do your photography. And at the same time, I, I will uh, do my own photography so they can see how I do things, how I approach people, or if I do landscape photography, how I build up my stuff. And then for sure in the evening. We will discuss all this. We have a monitor where we put up our pictures and we discuss them, mm -hmm. and we look at each other's pictures. and And my job would be to to uh, to optimize uh, their the the knowledge behind the camera, of course. And uh, and sometimes you meet you meet people that is just so talented that you wouldn't believe it. Really, really talented people, very much, especially the women, actually. That's my experience. Mm -hmm. I've met a lot of wonderful female photographers. Yeah, yeah, and, very much. And it's my whole, uh, you know, many people say, well, so-and-so engineering or whatever is mm -hmm. dominated by men, right? And mm -hmm. there's glass ceiling, and that's never been true in photography. Or, or yeah. basically with agencies and magazines that I've worked with, too. It's an yeah. even mix of men and women, sometimes more, sometimes less. But that's a great thing yeah. about the field is that it's it's uh, very uh, universal, yeah, and it appeals to people. And and yeah. uh, we've had some great women photographers on on our live streams. Yeah, and yeah, it's just been very rewarding. Yeah, exactly. Let's, let's go, yeah. Oh yeah. It, let's go on the next mm -hmm. image too, because I yes, I don't, want to, I, I don't want to lose track yeah. of talking about photography. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. Is that's true. Yeah. Way? We go, yeah. yeah. I go off in tangents, and I get the hook, yeah. you know. <laughs> there again, I mean, it's, yeah. This the story behind this this shot is 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 uh, is it's not a um, how can I put it? It's not that I think it's it's more or less as the most of my uh, my portraits. It it happens uh, when I'm when I'm at at a, at a place. And uh, this one is from uh, Nepal, uh, where this 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 guy he was sitting, and he's he's what you would consider as a holy man. And um, yeah, he, uh, he was living he was living together with some other uh, people, more or less on the street. And it was it, when you're living on the street, it was an open space, so mm. they have an open fire space, and it was just sitting there and then i went there and i took his portrait and uh, 
yeah the the different from this portrait to the one you saw before is, is this yes. is more you know the, a lot of things is going on here uh and uh, sometimes you you know it's what you see you say, to react say, yeah exactly yeah. and you have this little thing sitting up here and the fly up uh, in his, his under his hair and uh, whatever you can see in the background is actually his living room so it's a little bit it's a busy pictures picture but it tells tells all of us a story about a, a holy man in uh, in Nepal and I'm well, glad that you brought it up yeah sometimes you know it, what I love about this well I love a lot of things about it but the fact is you pull back so you have more of his physical presence yeah the beads and the in the uh, the shawl or, or robe that he's wearing you see that because that really mm -hmm. feeds into who he is really tells the story and not that a mm -hmm. an ultra close-up of this wouldn't be compelling no. but the fact I, is you're also telling a story here which i love thank you so much yeah i think so i mean it's uh, uh if you go too close then then there has to be a reason for it and um mm. if you had this this person in your studio um maybe um and you have a white background and so on then maybe you would you would go very close to his his face because it's such a strong face but when you're meeting people as i did here i think it's, it's important that you can see his arm you know how is his arms the the, the structure the, the thing he has around his neck and how does he, you know, heat up his body and all that. So there's also some some story into this, but um, yeah, yeah, it's true. Oh, Thank you for beautiful. Oh yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Let's move mm -hmm. on to the next uh, visual because I'm I'm actually looking yeah. for things that, uh, yeah. that caught my eye when I was going yeah, through. Yeah. And the the problem the problem with your work is that I I. <laughs> I want to show all of it. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. We only but, have an hour. But <laughs> yeah. This, this yeah. I loved, and I thought it was, I, I looked at this, and I the thing that struck me, there were some other versions of this shot. Mm -hmm. But yeah. you, kept, you kept working the situation. Yeah. You didn't Absolutely. take a shot, look at it in the viewfinder, say, fine, and move along, right? Which is mm, the, no, the no, no. danger today digitally. You say, okay, I love this shot. I'm leaving. You worked it. You kept shooting. What, what, what's he going to do next? What's he, here he has yeah. his hands on the fire or close to the fire. And, and uh, I just thought it was really very mm -hmm. thoughtful in the way you, you massaged the situation. Thank you very much. Yeah. It's um, what, I, what I do like about. Uh, photography as well is that that as you just said that if you just if too many take a picture look behind the yeah. camera you know and, and then you don't do that i mean you have to trust trust thing trust that that what you're looking at that that, that your equipment is working if you should be looking at anything it should be your histogram if you of one of another reason have a difficult uh, light situation and look at the histogram and, and let it be so because for me when i did this when i do my photography in general terms i really like to try to have more than one story and then at the same time that that the elements is not in a conflict with each other so when i was there sitting in, in my little boat that was going forth and back like this I was really trying to get the story where you have the nets in the front who lead into the person who's sitting with the fire, the reflection in the water, and then that his boat and the other boat with the other guy over here was not in a conflict with each other. So it's like separated from each other, everything. And that's that's something made, that made me happy that it was possible for me. But but it, as you said, it, it, if you just point and shoot, then... Um, then um, you, you don't get the, the last small spices uh, along your way. Um, yeah, for it, sure. To, to, to develop, what you're talking about is developing photographer's peripheral vision. 
you know, so yeah. you're not only aware of what you're shooting, but you're aware of what's happening around you and how it might contribute yeah. to a, an additional photo or a better photo. And, exactly. And yeah. that that's what I like about this is you're just very aware of, of your surroundings. And, Thank you, yeah. and it, it's, it's an important message to carry forward because I've been tempted sometimes with students to take black masking tape and mask off the monitor. <laughs> the back of it. Yeah, you can't yeah, look at idea. it all day long. You know, you just exactly, have to yeah, use yeah. The, your histogram, your exposure, you know, monitor yeah. that, but just just stop looking at it each time because you lose half the action. You know, Absolutely. something happens yeah. and you're staring at the back of the, the cannon. You know, so I I can't count how many times I've been sitting in a, something very similar to this, whatever it has been. And around me, there was a photographer, to photographer, sitting literally and looking at the monitor. And I was thinking, <laughs> how stupid can you be? I mean, in five minutes, <laughs> this is life. life. <laughs> it, yeah, yeah. The light is gone. Those two boats won't be here. The fisherman went home to his wife. And thanks God for that. But you're right here now. Shoot, for God's sake. You know, it, it, it doesn't come twice. Yeah, it's, it, it's so true. Uh, and I yeah, had yeah. an exercise back in the day. I, I taught mm -hmm. some still photography when I was very young. I was in my 20s, uh, mm -hmm. briefly. And I had yeah. a, an exercise I had at that point in time was just go down to Target and buy 20 rolls of the cheapest film you can find. Shoot it mm -hmm. up and we'll look, we'll look at it. <laughs> you know, not, yeah. Because it keeps shooting and it, it keeps shooting, mm -hmm. keep working. Uh, Cartier-Bresson used to say, Circle your prey. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and uh, just, just be there and just pay attention to what's going on. Yeah. And, and another advice, uh, if, if it's useful for anyone, then it's, it's when I, I do a lot of aerial photography, which is a question about very short of time when you're flying over area. It can be a river delta, it could be mountains or whatever. But because it's it's so expensive to 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 do aerial photography in, uh, in in helicopters, then you maybe have 20, 25 minutes to cover this area because it costs such a great amount of money. But my point is that before I do that, I will always check my camera, my histogram, are they the Dutch and dirt and lenses and whatever. I'll go through everything. Is my shutter speed in place? Is I'm extremely well organized before I go up because I know I have 25 minutes and those I want to shoot. I will just bang, 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 bang. And not sitting there, spending my time looking um, at the back of my camera. So it, it's also that, that build up your confidence and trust in your equipment. And of course, it will happen for, every, for all of us that after shooting, you come back and say, holy cow. <laughs> what went wrong? And then you put the <laughs> ISO wrong or whatever. Yeah. So, but that's a part of it. That's why you go out the next morning and, and, and do a new job. That, that's why uh, pilots have checklists. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I yeah. think it's valuable for photographers, too, to have a... Because it's a very technical endeavor. I mean, you mm -hmm. got to make sure if you want to achieve what you're seeing in your brain, camera's got to mm -hmm. see it. So what is what is yeah. the ISO? What is the yeah. what are the what's focal length that you think is going to be the preferable one uh, yeah. at this particular juncture? But let's see some uh, more images. I know mm -hmm. there's a couple. I'm mm -hmm. oh, I love this oh, one, yeah. and I'm not sure oh, yeah. that it, uh, yeah. it's 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 a great portrait. Thank you so very much. <laughs> and I, I, well, I know yeah. that your portrait photographer and I don't mean to categorize you in one thing no 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 but this is again um, a lesson in observance mm -hmm. observing what well, you, you're yeah. probably shooting something over here or over there but then mm -hmm. you saw this because of your photography peripheral vision yeah and and and, and I guarantee everyone that 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 what happened for me was that I was walking in this little village uh, in, in Thailand and uh, it was inside, all the kids was playing around uh, inside in, in the classrooms. 
And there was this broken hole in the glass. That's what you can see down the corner. And uh, I was just walking around doing different kinds of uh, things. But I knew, I knew from the very beginning that at one point, all the kids would look through the window. Sure, sure. So I knew, <laughs> so I knew that, that it was only a question about time when there would be a boy looking at me just as he did. And I turned around, bang, and that was it. It's, and, but yeah. I, I, I want to also call attention to the delicacy of the placement of the boy's eyes next yeah. to the sharp glass. You see, you took the time to make these finite adjustments mm. where the, the, it's perfectly framed between the sharp edges. And uh, it's right. just, it's, well, it's a thought, very thoughtful photograph. Mm. And I, in fact, at, at, at this moment, I'd like to ask you a little bit before we run out of time. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'd like to ask you a little bit about your Lightroom work, what you do mm -hmm. uh, to either, uh, sometimes like with Ed Cashy, he very rarely, because he's a photojournalist, very yeah. rarely does much manipulation, maybe a little yeah. contrast here and there or a slight mm -hmm. vignette or something. But what does your process, uh, post-process look like? <clears throat> I am... If I can claim something, I am so uncomplicated that you wouldn't believe it. What I do is, is really, really on such a, a small, my level of knowledge around Photoshop is first of not, of not that great. So what I do, I've been concentrating myself to do, to work just as when I was working in the, in, in the dark room, mm -hmm. very simple, small adjustments, uh, very rarely I, I will crop it. I take the frame as it is. And then uh, I go to my histogram, make sure everything is inside the histogram. Mm -hmm. Then I, um, uh, I, I try to, 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 uh, to bring the situation as I saw it. So if, if it was whatever, so it, it's, it's for me, it's like five easy click, five, six click. <laughs> and um, and that's that's actually it. Uh, what I do do like, and that's I did the same in, in the dark room. I like to 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 darken a little bit around my subject. Uh, I like to to lead your eyes into what I what I think yeah. is important. And um, yeah, that that's that's it. Uh, if I do landscape photography, I, I, I sometimes can do can spend much more time because I think it's fun. For me, it's just fun. If I like bring up colors, uh, we talked about waterfalls early on, you know, make more yeah. structure in the water, all those things. And then I'm just a, a kid behind the, the behind the computer. But all my portraits in general terms, uh, it, it, it's uh, five minutes, click, click, click. I open up, boom, 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 <laughs> and that's it. Yeah, you look good. You look good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you do all your work yeah. in the camera, which is really the way we had to do it before. Yeah, we didn't have the, some of the options we have today. However, yeah. seeing some of the enhancements, uh, especially interviewing people like this or talking to people, mm -hmm. like this, and and how uh, what a wonderful tool it is. You know, it can yeah. really enhance things that we didn't have a whole lot of control over before. Mm -hmm. but, uh, mm -hmm. well let's move on to uh, another image yeah uh, if we got do we still have a little time with you Kristen? yeah, yeah. there's there's uh, absolutely you i'm here for all of you so oh, oh it's it's great yeah. because there's just really really uh we wanted to kind of end uh on oh, this uh, on this shot this is the last shot of the show and the, mm -hmm. for me the time has flown by <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. For me, as well. There's probably dragon for you. It's, oh God, when am I rid of? <laughs> no, no. It, you, I, I was thinking before. Uh, hopefully, that the, the audience uh, who's who's listening to us have just as good time as I have. Because how <laughs> often do I talk to a, a person like you, a nerd, just like me? Uh, yes, you yes. Know, <laughs> to be honest, you know, because for me, it's really it's kind of massage to yeah. be able just to talk away because. Uh, my wife, my family, I dearly love them all and my friends. 
but you know they, they couldn't care less. They say, "Oh, that's what." <laughs> they would put this way: "Say what nice a picture. nice picture." <laughs> yeah, you have you have a great camera, Christian. I said, "Thank you." Yes, I had. <laughs> yeah, I'm surprised it came out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, but the camera doesn't do all the work. But it, a long story short, I hope everybody had a great time. I, wonderful this, this time is, for me. This has been really yeah. a fun time to see you again and then get caught up with photographs of yours that I hadn't seen before. And Thank you so very much. Yeah. Just just been a, a pleasure seeing you again. I hope that we can you, bring, you, bring you back at some point to Inside Anytime. the Bruno Studio. And maybe Always. we should re rename it to Inside the Nerd Studio. I I don't know. I think <laughs> <laughs> I would yeah, love that. Yeah. It's it's always a great pleasure, and it's uh, it'd be nice just to sit here and see some of my pictures that uh, you surprised me with. Because people should also know that, that we I have not prepared anything for this. I just <laughs> it yeah. came as a as as it has been shown, but it's very nice for me. Absolutely. Good. Well, thank yeah. you, Tristan, and please everybody, you, uh, if you're watching, yeah. uh, go to bettermoments.com. There, yeah, I Thank think you. it's up on screen now. And and uh, just see some of the photography. And we we are you won't be limited to time the way we are. So thank you again for joining us at you, uh, Inside the Lumino Studio. And we'll see you next time. And from my all the best to Denise and Rigo as well for yes. uh, make all this happen for all of us. And uh, thank you for have me and especially thank you for, for your passion for photography because that's that's something we we, we all should appreciate a lot. Thank you for, for everything. We we do share that. Thanks so much. We'll talk Absolutely. to you soon.